and welcome. For some, Howard Chaikin is an outspoken, polarizing figure. This, more than anything, is likely why his innovative work on American flag is often overlooked, or begrudgingly acknowledged if it is mentioned. However, there are those that would argue one cannot mention Dark Knight Returns or Watchmen without also citing the influence American Flag had on those two well-known works. The author, Michael Chabon, perhaps summarized this influence best in his foreword to the collected edition of American Flag, published by Dynamite in 2005. Orson Welles and Chaikin may not have invented or pioneered all the stylistic and technical innovations on display in their masterworks but they were the first to put them all together in a way that changed how their successors thought about what they could and had to and wanted to do. American Flag ran for 50 issues. It was immediately followed by a rebranded 12-issue reboot before it concluded forever. However, it's only the first year of the original title that is considered the most influential portion of the series. During this year, Chaikin and the letterer, Ken Brusenak, integrated fine art design and typography into the language of comic books. The result was a series of pop art design elements seamlessly melded with a sequential narrative. After this intense year, Chaikin was burnt out and his involvement with the series diminished over time. Eventually, he stepped aside entirely and others produced the series. For its time, American Flag looked and felt different from anything else available in 1983. It was mature, sexy, satirical, nihilistic, idealistic, and in many ways, prescient. The story begins with Reuben Flagg arriving on Earth after being drafted into the Plexus Rangers, the law enforcement branch of the Plex Corporation. He's stationed at Plex Mall No. 7, formerly known as Chicago. Technically, Plex Mall 7 is located outside of Chicago. The city itself is a war zone where over 70 political factions or ideologies battle one another. Through the course of the first 12 issues, Flag encounters corruption on every level. Gangs, politicians, and idealists all seem to be on the take. Faced with a completely corrupt system, controlled by morally suspect people, Flag attempts to restore the integrity of the country he idolizes. American Flag takes place in the year 2031. The world is in ruins after years of atomic war, social change, and economic collapse. The American government has relocated to Mars, leaving control of the United States to the Plex Corporation. Plex controls what remains of the United States, the Soviet Union, and parts of Australia. Canada is an unknown communist-controlled quantity, and Asia has been decimated. Plex is very similar to the Roman Empire as it was sliding towards decline. It's a culture where hedonism is explicitly endorsed by the ruling overlords. Plex feeds society's inherent self-indulgence with outrageous entertainment, drugs, and pornography. This keeps people numb and distracted so they don't question the fact that they are ruled by a profit-based dictatorship. Naturally, corruption is rampant in all levels of society. Every city is basically a mall, which is a concept that's somewhat reminiscent of Mega City 1 from Judge Dredd. All internal scenes feel like they take place inside a sterile shopping center loaded with video screens pumping out useless advertising 24 hours a day. The TV screen is therefore the mirror that represents the lifestyle of that futuristic culture. In modern terminology, all TV shows are reality shows. And, chillingly, these shows have as much depth and substance as anything available in that genre today. What was a satirical punchline in American Flag is, sadly, a self-obsessed, unironic reality in today's world. Due to the conditions of the world, American Flag clearly represents a dystopia. It's a world living in denial that total collapse and complete anarchy are perpetually moments away. American Flag is a very political story that reflects the social concerns of the early 80s, as defined by Chaikin himself. However, these concerns are projected into a future setting, making the series an allegory. This is a rather standard science fiction trope. The most popular example would be the original Star Trek series. Many episodes reflected the social atmosphere of the 60s, being abstracted and presented as obstacles in the future. In fiction, The Forever War, by Joe Haldeman, published in 1974, is an obvious parallel to the Vietnam War, a very long conflict that seemed to have no end. In modern times, it's also relevant as a parallel to the war on terrorism. Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card, published in 1985, is about video games training children for war. This was a popular misguided criticism of video game culture during the 80s, one that persists to this day. 
The point being, while American Flag is concerned about resolving the issues of the early 80s, these concerns are timeless, and in some cases, persistent, or recurring. As mentioned at the beginning, American Flag is sometimes mentioned in the same breath as Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns. Often it's cited as a piece of work that influenced both of those more popular works. Naturally, this should lead to the question, what specifically is that influence? The quick answer is the textual elements and the overall composition of the page. Sound effects, for example, are integrated into the artwork itself instead of being an elaboration of the text. That is, there is a melting of the words with the images to create an overall design like one would see in commercial artwork. Rather than pictures and words working side by side, the two become entangled to the point where removing one greatly affects the intent of the panel or the page. For example, the door slamming obscures the swear word, but its primary purpose is to indicate the woman has exited while still speaking. Thus it enhances the frustration displayed by the character. According to Ken Brusenak, the letterer for the series, Chaikin gave him a lot of room to express his design sensibilities. Chaikin would ordinarily do rough pencils of the entire page, indicating text and word balloons, then Brusenak would letter it and add the typography to the scene. Although, as the series progressed, he would occasionally do the lettering before Chaikin had penciled in any work. For the record, Brusenak's prior experience was mainly working for the legendary artist Jim Steranko, doing layouts for his magazines. Although, he had done the lettering for Steranko's adaptation of the movie Outland that appeared in Heavy Metal. For the most part, Brusenak was a logo and lettering designer. He utilized fonts that were functional, but also suited the material and the tone of the scene. His style and sensibilities worked seamlessly with Chaikin's vision and artwork. Perhaps the most important influence is one word, texture. It's all of the background elements enhancing the foreground. Everything, all the words and the pictures, serves the story and the satirical tone and atmosphere being explored. Furthermore, it gives the story a sense that it is occurring in the world where other events are taking place. While our focus is on the characters and their actions, there are other events going on around them. This fills up the scene and gives it depth. It's also used as a parallel narrative technique, where the A story is in the foreground and the complementary B story is in the background, usually enhancing or elaborating on the A story. Usually both converge at some point near the conclusion of the scene, or in some cases, later in the issue. Although, for the most part, in American Flag, the parallel narrative is background noise giving the scene an atmosphere. An example of this is in the first issue. Reuben Flag discovers that the popular free show, Bob Violence, is loaded with subliminal images. While he tells his boss about this discovery, the TV show continues in the background until it concludes. This leads to the Go Gang countdown, which then continues until the inevitable conflict begins. As an extra possibly intentional twist, the B story concerns subliminal images. Not only is this represented in the art, but then these panels are relegated to the background, becoming subliminal images themselves. It's an appropriate touch. This layering technique is most obviously used in Watchmen. The background elements, such as the newspaper headlines, tell the background story of a world preparing for an atomic war. In The Dark Knight Returns, this manifests as the talking heads, commenting or extrapolating on current events. Dark Knight also utilizes the full panel sound effect, as seen in American Flag. As a side note, Alan Moore would use this technique in a slightly satirical manner within Promethea. He clearly announces the background B story is texture. In order to highlight the visual complexity of American Flag, let's briefly look at the path the eye travels to take in the entire narrative on a page. First, let's contrast this with an average mainstream comic from the same year, Amazing Spider-Man. This page creates a very distinct Z pattern in both the top and bottom panel rows. It's a very naturalistic approach to reading text for a North American audience. Even the most textually complex page from that issue has an organic flow to it. It's very simplistic and requires no effort to follow. In American Flag, this flow of text is seemingly erratic. However, it intentionally directs the eye across the entire page itself. There are layers or short bursts of parallel narratives, all of which enhance or complement the tone being established. In other words, the text is placed so there's a subliminal guided view of the entire page, taking in the detail of each panel. These two narrative elements, words and pictures, are intrinsically tied together, 
even more so than a standard comic book. Another element of American Flag is it represents a new frontier. The Plex Mall is a city established on the edge of the wilderness. The wilderness itself is what remains of the prior civilization. It's like any city in the Wild West in the early days of the United States. In essence, Reuben Flagg is an immigrant, freshly transplanted from Mars, who finds himself being the sheriff of a frontier city. He's an idealist in the wild, trying to uphold the values he believes America should represent. In Chaikin's words, Reuben Flagg is James Garner as Maverick, running around in a future that looks a lot like Gunsmoke, with guys with guns and women with big tits. That's possibly a little more reductive than necessary, but it is reasonably accurate. In a related note, Reuben Flagg looks exactly like every Chaikin male protagonist that preceded him. The Scorpion, Dominic Fortune, and Cody Starbuck. Chaikin would continue this trend in works that followed American Flagg. This is simply Chaikin's recurring motif. Reuben Flagg and all the others that look like him are thematically similar to Michael Moorcock's Eternal Warrior, except they all wear the same face. Basically, they are the hero that saves the day and gets the girl. Their characteristics and ideals are very similar in an overall sense, but they do have their unique attributes. Another element that is difficult to overlook is the majority of the supporting cast are women. While Chaikin did moderately objectify women by drawing them scantily clad and wearing lingerie whenever appropriate, they weren't merely objects for men to conquer. In this respect, they were active participants in their own sexuality. Women owned their desires and openly pursued them, usually with Reuben Flagg. Furthermore, women held positions of power, and they weren't merely the support system for a male figurehead. They had their own goals and ideals that weren't dependent on the men in their lives. Much like the diverse cast, this was a reasonably progressive attitude for an early 80s comic. While it's easy to point to the women in lingerie as Chaikin expressing a personal fetish, which, again, is a recurring motif in his work, it should also be pointed out that everything in American Flag was fetishized. Sex, violence, and politics. And, at the same time, it was all equally satirized. Speaking of sex, American Flag has a lot of it. In fact, there are very few women in the comic that Reuben Flag doesn't have sex with. In context, this does make sense. Reuben is a former porn star whose holographic appearance continues to star in a very popular series, Mark Thrust, Sexus Ranger. So he is a high-profile conquest, one could say. That being said, the sex in the comic is about as explicit and as frequent as an average mature movie, or for that matter, a slightly edgy TV show. It's tastefully done and, presumably, the nudity is non-existent to avoid limiting the comic book's distribution. In fact, the depiction of sex is quite healthy. It's consensual, it's usually very playful, and the participants enjoy themselves. It feels quite natural to the characters, especially in the overly sexualized environment they exist within. Of course, the fact that a comic book contains sex is off-putting to some, but it should be reiterated that it's tastefully done. It may be a touch idealized, but no more so than other depictions of sex in other forms of popular media. In the end, regardless of one's opinion of Howard Chaikin, American Flag was an influential comic of the early 80s. It may not have pioneered all the techniques seen within, but it did arrange them in a reasonably mature, layered, and coherent whole.